I hope you're hungry! In Taiwan, for a buck, you can get a bowl of delicious oyster noodle soup. This country has world-famous night markets, where you can find plenty of street food to fit any budget. When you're traveling, you don't want to be weighed down with a bunch of heavy clothes. You probably won't even wear half of them. Save some luggage space and find a good laundry service. You can wash around one pound of clothes for a dollar in Malaysia. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can get some nice local breakfast for the same price too. If you find yourself in the Caribbean and you want to buy some pirate corn on the cob, it's a buccaneer. Hey, that joke cost me a dollar. Do you think it's possible to buy 10 eggs for the price of one dollar? You can in Malaysia. Wonder why they sell eggs in groups of 10. Which one dollar option would you choose in Vietnam? Two nice cups of local coffee, five local newspapers, one year of insurance for your motorbike, a good hair wash, or four delicious rolls. And <laughs> now we're talking. If you're in Indonesia on a budget, you can always get a full meal of chicken porridge, meatballs, and chicken noodles. And if you need some help back to your hotel, a motorbike taxi will cost you around a dollar as long as it's a short enough ride. In Bangkok, Thailand, there's a long-tail boat that takes you from one side of a wide river to the other. And for a dollar, you can ride on it a whole six times, back and forth, back and forth. Are your feet swollen from the flight? Give yourself a 30-minute foot massage in the Philippines, something you can actually get for a dollar over there. Hello there, Sri Lanka! While there, you can buy a 5-hour bus or train ride across the island for about a dollar. If you don't feel like traveling all over, search for some local places to try their traditional coconut pancakes for the same price. Meanwhile, in Armenia, you can choose between a huge pack of flour, a big sack of potatoes, or three loaves of bread. What would you even do with all that stuff? Hey, how about turkey? Eh, not the Thanksgiving one. Only got a few coins in your pocket? There's a nice cup of Turkish tea waiting for you. It's actually the most popular hot drink in the country. Or if you want to eat something delicious, you can have a piece of the sweet pastry baklava. Okay, one dollar won't get you the biggest piece ever, but it's still worth it. A hot dog for a dollar? That's not a trap. It's the real price you can actually find on the streets of Macedonia. Meanwhile, in Croatia, you can get a ticket for public transportation, local newspapers, or a scoop of excellent ice cream. Oh yeah, and a cup of cappuccino at a local coffee shop, too. Speaking of a good coffee, yes, Italy! Need a slap-in-the-face espresso after your all-night party session? No problem! You'll have to search around a bit for some less touristy places to get it for a dollar, but it's doable. If you're in Rome, looking for something to see, you'll definitely want to snap a couple of pics at the Colosseum. It's actually free. But there are local actors dressed up in gladiator uniforms, and it's customary to tip them at least a dollar. Not your thing? Pick up two bottles of water for the same price. But wait, 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 we're still not done with Italy. Why not go completely wild and spend another dollar, this time to buy a house? Yeah, you heard me right. Okay, to be precise, these houses cost one euro, so that's gonna be around a dollar and 20 cents. But still, you could try to bargain with them. And no, it's not that real estate in Italy that's insanely priced. There's a story behind it. Italy's trying to attract new residents back to their tiny towns to increase the population. People have been moving out of these areas, headed for the cities to look for work. These towns just want to bring some life back onto their streets. Moving to the UK now. You can definitely find something for a dollar. The question is, how do you handle it? How about a $1 pickled egg? Yup, an egg, boiled and then pickled in vinegar. It's a classic over there, usually served as a side dish for fish. When you're in London, you can visit most museums for a dollar. Okay, okay, you got me. Museums there are mostly free. So, a whole bunch of pickled eggs, anyone? Now, you can't visit France without tasting an authentic baguette. But the fact that you can get it for a dollar makes it even better. Baguette is the French word for stick and it's one of the most famous French products. There was a law passed in 1920 that banned bakers from starting work before 4 a.m. or from working past 10 p.m. The bakers had to come up with a fast-baking bread to feed to everyone. And ta-da! That's when the baguette showed up. 
Iceland is a beautiful country, but also one of the most expensive in the world. There aren't many things you can buy for a dollar in Iceland, but milk is the exception. How about a good old bag of chips? This afternoon snack cost about a dollar in Ireland. Smoky bacon flavor for me. In Luxembourg, you can get a 1.5 liter bottle of water for this amount. Yeah, not a lot going on over there, but still an interesting country. It's the only grand duchy in the world, whatever that means. There's not a lot you can get for a dollar in Belgium either, but okay, chewing gum might come in handy. In Finland, you can get access to a public toilet. But if you ask nicely, the coffee shop down the road might help you save a buck on that. Poland has a traditional dessert that looks like a donut, and two pieces cost a dollar. The dough is rich, fluffy, filled with jam, and covered in powdered sugar. Traditionally, they eat it on Fat Thursday. In the States, people went crazy over it too, but we eat it on Fat Tuesday. Tuesday, Thursday, potato, potato. (laughs) I'm up for a couple of these any day of the week. If you're visiting Switzerland, you're going to need a bit more than a dollar. But okay, you can go to a deli and taste a really, really tiny piece of Swiss cheese. Just to see what you've been missing. They might not even charge you. Another thing you can get for a dollar is uh, maybe one apple. Maybe. Pinto. It's a traditional Spanish snack, usually just bread with toppings like vegetables, pickles, or meat. They sell it everywhere, but the good local places that sell it for a dollar are usually hidden in the non-touristy areas. All that for just a dollar? Not bad. In Germany, find a pretzel, eat it. No, it's not that kind of pretzel. It's a freshly baked bready thing that's all kinds of delicious. Or you can buy 400 cotton swabs if you're not hungry. It's a nice sunny day in Sweden. You're taking a walk, enjoying your day, and you're in the mood for something refreshing. For a dollar, of course. Ooh, an ice cream popsicle. Okay, you totally got me. I'm in. Going to Brazil? Great. A dollar there can get you a glass of fresh orange juice. Or even better, if you don't feel like walking around with your backpack all day, get to the nearest bus station. They have lockers there, so you can ditch your stuff and head straight for the beach. Time for Colombia. In the capital, Bogota, you can get coffee with two biscuits or an arepa, a traditional corn delicacy that comes in different flavors. Then, (laughs) more coffee. If you're wandering around New York City, you might just be able to find a tasty slice of pizza for that price. It just might take a while. Are your car or bike tires flat? Well, you know the price for using the air pump. Need some string, some buttons, a few balloons, or something equally random? Head to the 99-cent store. And in Canada, you can buy lettuce. In Costa Rica, you can get a whole watermelon, papaya, or pineapple. And in Tanzania, a nice potato omelet. An hour after people disappear, most urban areas will be left empty and quiet. Perhaps the sound of wind, falling leaves, or other natural sounds previously drowned out by city noise and traffic will be heard. The subways of many cities are protected from groundwater by a system of pumps. If there are no people to monitor such systems, most subways will flood within 36 hours. Due to malfunctions, sewage treatment plants will stop working, leading to pollution of rivers and lakes with wastewater. The water pipes in Detroit will become unusable, leading to the flooding of the city. Food and refrigerators will spoil. Raccoons and wolves will inhabit abandoned human homes. Major airports will be covered in rust and overgrown with ivy. Cruise ships in Alaska will sink under the weight of ice that accumulates on them. Lions from the San Diego Zoo will gradually escape emboldened by the power outage of the electric fence around their enclosures. More and more black cats will appear on the streets of Rome and the Vatican. Rats and mice will consume all edible reserves and leave the cities. Plants will begin to grow in cracks in streets, highways, sidewalks, and buildings. More and more animals will notice the absence of people and flock to the cities. International Space Station will gradually decrease, 
Since no one will correct its orbit, the station will eventually fall to Earth and burn up. Along with it, digitized samples of human DNA will perish. A large part of the city's territory will be covered with a vegetation of lianas, grasses, and tree seedlings. The red square in Moscow will have a layer of soil and thick grasses growing, making the square completely green. Despite high levels of radiation, animal populations are increasing in abandoned areas. Plants have grown in many houses and buildings. Seawater will flood cities that were once drained by artificial drainage systems, such as London and Amsterdam. Satellites will begin to fall to Earth. Since no one maintained their speed of movement, they slowly approached Earth and eventually fell to the planet's surface. Wolves now roam freely around the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, and wild boars will be seen in Paris. Human speech will be preserved in rare words that parrots have memorized during their years of living with humans. Snakes will not only reproduce at incredible rates, but also grow much larger in size. Their main prey will be rodents that have multiplied in the first years after humans disappeared. Many human-made structures will collapse within 100 years, primarily those with a large number of steel elements. Fruit Christmas cakes, thanks to their alcohol coating, will not only retain their appearance but also freshness. Most buildings will be overtaken by plants and animals, and the city will resemble more of a wild nature landscape. The period of nuclear fuel decay will come to an end, and as a result, dead zones around the ruins of nuclear power plants will once again become habitable. The last parrots that spoke human language may go extinct since they memorized human speech, but it is simply not necessary for their survival in the wild. All modern carriers of information that preserve human culture, laser discs, photographic film, paper and the like, will turn to dust. Rebar inside concrete buildings, which are more durable than steel ones, will expand three times due to rust causing the destruction of concrete structures. Most modern cities will be covered by a green blanket, and collapsed skyscrapers and buildings will become new hills. Manhattan will return to its former state before human settlement, with numerous streams and lakes. There will be almost no evidence of the existence of human civilization. Only powerful stone buildings that rely solely on the force of gravity will survive such as Notre Dame de Paris. Of the products that existed during human civilization, only honey, especially in clay pots, and oil in wooden barrels, will be well preserved. Only a few stone structures will survive, including the pyramids in Giza and the Sphinx, almost entirely buried in the sands of the desert, and fragments of the Great Wall of China. By this time, a new ice age will begin on Earth. It is expected that the KEO satellite will enter the atmosphere by this time. Various pieces of space debris will collide with it during its descent, but this will not destroy the satellite. Eventually, it will fall into the waters of the world ocean. Remnants of spacecraft and satellite debris will float through space as the only reminder of human civilization. Everyone loves a good landmark. The Roman Colosseum, the ancient city of Machu Picchu, the Giza pyramids. But have you ever wondered how it once looked? Way back in the days when they were built? Or even in the time they were covered in ivy and forgotten by humanity? Buckle up, because we're heading on a time travel adventure to the world's greatest archaeological sites. Our voyage begins in South America, deep inside the Peruvian mountains. Behold! The city of Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is a monument to the ingenuity and power of the Inca civilization. During its prime, the Inca civilization stretched 2,500 miles along South America's coastline from modern-day Ecuador all the way down to Chile. And Machu Picchu was located at the heart and center of it. The historic site was constructed at around 7,000 feet above sea level. 
more or less around 1450 BCE. The gated city consisted of around 150 buildings made of stone. The Incas managed to build temples, houses, and even a complex aqueduct system to irrigate the entire town. And yes, they did all that without the help of wheels or any instrument made of iron. The housing model is somewhat similar to stone houses we see nowadays, with the difference that the Incas didn't use any cement to stick together the blocks of stone. Yet, they fit seamlessly on top of each other. Not only that, the Incas must have developed a rudimentary yet effective anti-earthquake technology, since in the event of a quake, the rocks would shake without falling out of place. If Machu Picchu had been built today, it would have cost over $70 million to finish the entire thing. The purpose of the site is still a mystery to many historians. Theories suggest that it could have been built as a ceremonial site, a safety base for the Inca people, or even a retreat for royalty. What we know for a fact is that in the 16th century, 100 years after Machu Picchu was built, its population abandoned it, with tree roots taking over the majority of the site and keeping it hidden from humankind for over four centuries. It wasn't until the 20th century that the world was reintroduced to Machu Picchu when a Peruvian farmer led Yale University professor Hiram Bingham III to visit the site. Since then, Bingham and many other explorers dedicated their lives and research to studying the archaeological wonder of Machu Picchu. Now, for the next stop on our time-traveling vehicle, the city of Pompeii in Italy. Pompeii has crowded our collective imagination for many years. The eruption of the Mount Vesuvius volcano in 79 AD and the destruction of an entire city is hopefully not something that will happen again. But I bet you're wondering, what did Pompeii look like on its last day? It took 18 hours for Pompeii's streets, markets, houses, and forums to be buried under millions of tons of volcanic ash. Thanks to some clever scientists, we discovered that the lava and ashes that covered Pompeii on its very last day actually helped to freeze the city in time. Different from ice, the cloud of ashes did not preserve the city intact. But as the items disintegrated over 2,000 years, they left voids under the earth. Archaeologists found that if they filled these voids with plaster, the shape of the buried city would soon reveal itself. And that's exactly what happened. Of course, it was nothing like the bustling city of 12,000 people that had existed for many years before the fateful eruption. Pompeii was a vibrant and rich municipality. The site's ruins revealed that many areas of Pompeii boasted impressive houses, some with balconies, which was a sign of great wealth at the time. And believe it or not, even some artwork survived the eruption. Archaeologists found well-preserved frescoes and murals of mythological creatures, all indicating that members of the high society lived there. Ruins show the city even had thermal baths and showers made with luxurious materials. Oh, and apparently, the people of Pompeii had amazing teeth. Yes, archaeologists could see even that tiny level of detail from the plaster molds they recovered from underground. Still in the Italian territory, we find one of the world's biggest tourist attractions, the Roman Colosseum. It was built as an amphitheater during the reign of Emperor Vespasian, around 70 AD. It wasn't until 80 AD that Vespasian's son, Emperor Titus, inaugurated the Colosseum. The monument was something to behold, with 157-foot-tall walls, over 80 entrances, and the capacity to host 87,000 people. All social classes and groups were welcome at the Colosseum, and this partly explains why it flourished for so many centuries. During the decline of the Roman Empire, around the 6th century AD, the Colosseum started being neglected and abandoned. The monument was looted, and some of its columns and stones were used to build infrastructure elsewhere. Only one-third of the original Colosseum still remains. And if it's big now, imagine what it once was. Greece was home to one of the world's largest empires. At the height of this empire, literally and historically speaking, more or less 2,400 years ago, the Greeks built a citadel known as the Acropolis. The Acropolis, which is composed of historical buildings, is considered to be one of the biggest landmarks of Western civilization to date. Tourists that visit the capital city of Athens today may be faced with yellowish and broken pillars of the Parthenon standing way up high in one of the city's hills. 
but way back when it was built, between 447 and 432 BCE, the imposing and majestic Parthenon was purely white, as the entire monument was built with gleaming white marble. The statues inside were made of gold. The Parthenon is a 23,000 square foot temple held up by 69 marble columns. The largest blocks of marble are massive, weighing around 10 tons each. And the most surprising fact is that the marble didn't come from Athens, but from a nearby site that stood 10 miles from the Acropolis known as Mount Pentelikon. Historians intrigued by where the primary material for building the Acropolis came from found tiny and big blocks of marble all scattered around the floor of Mount Pentelikon. There was also a paved road that the Greeks had built to carry the rocks around. But perhaps the most impacting monument of all times is located at the heart of the Middle East, outside the Egyptian city of Cairo. The pyramids are considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Giza Pyramid Complex was built as a tomb for the pharaoh Khufu around 4,500 years ago. Between 20 to 30,000 people took part in the construction process. It's composed of three pyramids. The massive monument is made out of approximately 8,000 tons of granite and over 550,000 tons of mortar, which gives it the appearance it has today. Would you believe me if I told you that the pyramids didn't always look like this? Far from it. They were shiny white with a golden triangular tip at the top. This is because the Egyptians used over 6 million tons of limestone to cover the entire rocky, step-like structure. All so that they could gleam white under the unforgiving sunlight of Egyptian skies. The Pyramid of Khufu remained the tallest structure on Earth made by humans for over 3,800 years. It was the only eight-sided pyramid in Egypt and was believed to align with Orion's belt. It's considered to be the most aligned construction facing north. In 1979, it was inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Let's head on down to the Indian city of Agra to quickly visit the Taj Mahal. You may know it as the Taj, but it can also be called by its more endearing name, a teardrop in the cheek of time. The Taj took over 22 years to build and was commissioned in 1632 by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan as a declaration of love for his third and favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It was made with ivory white marble and amazingly, due to tight conservation, it still remains very similar to what it was when it was built. I think all this talk of landmarks got me thirsty for some traveling. What about you? Tell us in the comments below if you've ever visited some of these sites or which interesting landmarks you'd add to this video.